Today we're headed out to get a professional install of a restool cam sway control hitch. We're finally getting rid of our weight distribution hitch and looking forward to a more comfortable tow. If sway is something that's on your mind when you're out towing your RV, you're not going to want to miss this video. And remember, if you want to continue to gain more knowledge around trucks towing and all things RV and camping related, start now by subscribing and click that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Trailer sway is something that's always on my mind anytime we're going out camping. Nice calm days, it's not an issue. But windy days such as today, it's something that does play on my mind. After three years of dealing with this, with a weight distribution hitch, I finally have enough and we're going to get this thing upgraded. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get her hooked up to the truck. So we're on our way to Pine Acres RV. We're gonna get our weight distribution hitch upgraded to a Reese dual cam sway control hitch done a lot of research on sway control hitches and it's kind of come to a bit of a toss-up between the Reese dual cam and the equalizer. Any reviews that I've read, uh, people who have each one of them really love them. A couple of factors that came into this final decision. One of them was cost. So I got a bit, little better of a deal on the, uh, the Reese dual cam than I could on the equalizer. Number two, the equalizer hitch completely depends on friction to control sway in your trailer. And there are brackets with friction pads on them. I assume you'd replace them over time as they wear out. But with the Reese dual cam system, it's using mechanics, not friction, to um, primarily control that sway control. I believe there's some friction component up in the head. We'll find out the details of that today we're there at the dealership. As we're driving along here and I'm talking about this, I've got the camera on the side window just trying to monitor the amount of free play our trailer does have. Now it, it's highly dependent not only on the amount of wind we have but the wind direction. I've got a tractor trailer coming up on my outside. It's an armor trailer. So I know that they are limited to 103 kilometers an hour, so I'll back up to about 100. I'll let him roll by and see what type of experience I'm going to get from him. Sometimes you'll get some push off the front of a tractor, or you'll get some suction off the back or the side. You'll get push off the side as well, but you'll act, you could even get some suction off the back of that trailer as it's rolling by. She goes. Well, we finished up at the dealership. I've got the hitch hooked up. It took a fair amount of work to get all the adjustments sorted out. Had to make an adjustment to the tilt of the head, actually the position of the head on the on the receiver itself. Uh, the technician typically uses one location but had to go up another one just to get the trailer trimmed out level. Position of the cams was off a bit. You also had to make an adjustment on that. So I, uh, I highly recommend if you're going to get into a Reese dual cam that you do go to a professional to get it done. First impression, when you're cutting hard corners, it's noisy. But that is that friction on friction of the bar that you're hearing getting on the highway ramp right now and it is somewhat breezy today the wind has picked up a bit so we'll uh, we'll get on the highway get up to speed here and and see how she performs there's definitely a difference in the dampening of the trailer 
the truck around, to move the tail around, it does immediately dampen and re-straighten out. That gives a lot of comfort when towing. So I've made a stop here at the Enfield Irving Big Stop. Feeling like a big rig today. Anyway, I wanted a nice piece of level ground to do a measurement here. That is uh, a fairly noticeable wind. That's definitely a crosswind that I was getting out on the highway. The performance of this hitch, I, I can't say enough for it so far, and I hope I'm not jinxing it. But it's, it's everything that I was expecting and hoping for and more. Just a tick over 37 inches in the front. And we're at about 36 and a half in the rear. And that's exactly how I wanted it. I certainly didn't want any additional height in the rear compared to the front. That means you're overloading the front of your truck. So a slight bit of squat, exactly what I was looking for. It's close enough to perfection. So I'm showing about 21 and a half inches to the bottom of the fender and back to the rear. And I'm making assumption these panels are all the same height. And I've got 23 and a half. So two inches over 30 feet. I think we're doing pretty good. So the restool cam sway system is very similar to my original weight distribution setup with the L-shaped bars. Hooked them in in a similar fashion. The difference here is you're going to move your sway bar in and it will sit on top of this cam. You'll see the bar's got the arch and that's where you need your cam sitting at the high point of that arch. Make sure your chains are all in line so your chain's not twisted. Our setup were six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If it's too difficult to raise this bar, then you've got to increase the height of your jack, elevate it, and it'll make this a lot easier. And remember to use your legs and not your back for pulling this in. So with the Reese dual cam sway control system, there's two physical principles at play here. One is friction, the other one is deflection. And I can't think of a better way to explain it other than deflection. So with friction, you do have a little bit of friction in the head here with the bar as the bar turns. I consider that insignificant, if not totally negligible. The other friction component is as the bar drags across the cam. So as your trailer attempts to sway back and forth, this bar is going to want to slide back and forth. And I've got the truck turned at quite an angle just to show you how much this bar moves. When the truck and trailer is straight, the cam here is at the top of this arch. So as your trailer wants to sway back and forth, it's going to want to move this bar forward or backward depending on how much the trailer turns relative to the truck. In order to get this bar to lift as it has here it needs to bend the bar and to bend a bar and a bar of this dimension takes quite a significant amount of effort. 
So as you can imagine, when everything's nice and lined up, when that trailer wants to move out a little bit, it's got to bend this bar one way or another. So with the truck turned hard right, you can see this bar gets pulled forward because the hitch head rotates. This connection point goes forward. So obviously the point that's sitting on the cam has to come forward as well. So by doing that, the bar needs to raise. So that bar is continually trying to push down force on that to keep equilibrium. And that equilibrium is balanced off with a similar effect on the other side. So on the other side you can see the head is closer to the body of the trailer, the bar is extended back beyond the cam position so it's riding on the other part of the arch. Both of these are working really hard to come back to equilibrium and that equilibrium is having your cams sitting at the high point. This setup is very effective for controlling sway. There is some friction with this as well and it's recommended in the instructions not to lubricate this too much. You could put a tiny tiny bit of grease or something just to take the popping sound out of it. That bit of friction helps, but it's this uh, mechanical force of that bar wanting to get back to equilibrium at that high point. That's key in this system and how it works effectively. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this content and would like to get access to future content that's going to be put on the channel or other videos that I've already created on the channel, please subscribe and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss a thing. Take care.